With their grace, stealth, and beauty, cats captivate us. Some are fast, others are powerful. Each a specialized machine, finely tuned to its habitat. But what if there were a cat designed for every challenge? A supreme hunter with the combined powers of all the cats. A super cat. What would it look like? Could this formidable feline ever exist? This is a Bengal tiger, one of the largest wildcats in the world. Weighing nearly 300 kilos, an adult male is an intimidating beast. At two kilos, the diminutive cod cod would comfortably fit under one of his paws. Between the two extremes are another 35 species of cat, each equipped with claws and canines. At first glance, all cats seem remarkably similar in body type. But life is about compromise. If you're disguised for the jungle, you can't hide out in the open. Each cat has its strengths and its weaknesses. But those limitations are for the real world. With computer animation and a little expert help, anything is possible. These three men have very different knowledge about cats. They'll combine their expertise to turn the basic feline prototype into a super cat. They've gathered at the Institute for Greatly Endangered and Rare Species in South Carolina. Here, Bhagavan Antal cares for and trains a variety of wild cats, many of which have been reared by hand. Joining Antal are Craig Sappho from the Smithsonian National Zoo and biomechanical engineer, Dr. Greg Erickson. My questions when you're asking to build a super cat are why an animal is good at what it does. So why is a leopard such a great climber? Why is a cheetah such a fast runner? Why is a lion so strong? I think if we're gonna build a super cat, we have to take an engineer's perspective, and I think we have to build the model piece by piece. There are lots of questions they're going to have to answer. How will they make super cat the best hunter, the strongest climber, the highest jumper? What adaptations will make super cat the ultimate king of the beasts? One of the attributes that Supercat really needs is incredible speed. The ability to chase down his prey to catch whatever he wants for dinner. And there's only one place to turn for speed. The cheetah. This is Sarah. She's an 11-year-old at the Cincinnati Zoo. And at 98 kilometers per hour, she's the fastest land animal ever recorded on Earth in a controlled setting. On an empty stomach in the wild, cheetahs can run even faster than that. But it's the acceleration that really blows away the competition. From 300 yards away, the cheetah just takes off running. In about two and a half seconds, they're up to about 45 to 50 miles an hour. By the time the wildebeest picks its head up to see what's going on, the cat has closed to 100 meters. Now, it's just a flat out foot race. Here at Tiger Sanctuary, the team can examine a cheetah up close. Look at this animal, it's, a, it's an engineering marvel. It has a very small, lightweight head. It's got extremely long legs. The feet of a cheetah are like an athlete's track spikes. The pads are very rigid and the claws are protracted all the time, so they're in contact with the ground, giving this animal good traction no matter what it's doing. If you were to look inside a cheetah, you would see they have this, this gigantic chest cavity and it holds these giant lungs and a very large heart. 
This is what fuels the machine. The nostrils of the cheetah are particularly interesting. They're, they're very large, and this brings in air to cool the brain and also provide oxygen for those gigantic running muscles. But the real secret behind this animal's incredible running is its flexible spine. Cheetahs have an amazing ability to flex and extend their spine. Over half their muscle mass is on their hind limbs and lower back, which flexes like a spring. There are two ways a running animal can increase its speed. One is increased stride rate. The other is increased stride length. A rodent and a giraffe run at about the same speed, 40 to 50 kilometers per hour. With rodents, you can barely see their feet when they're running because their stride rate is so fast. But a giraffe running at the same speed looks like it's loping in slow motion. A cheetah running at top speed hits a stride length of about seven and a half meters and takes up to four strides per second. So if you're able to somehow combine those two, stride rate and stride length, you've got a super cat, a super running cat anyway, and that's what cheetahs have done. Tigers on the yard. With Antle's help, Erickson and Sappho are going to compare the cheetah's running stride to another big cat. When you hear the whistle, the tiger's loose on the yard. Coming up. Tiger's loose. Wow, that was nice. She did a good job. Good girl. This tiger is twice as long as the cheetah, but size isn't everything. So okay. she's up in the air. Yeah, she's right suspended front. right there, and the left leg's gonna come down again. That's a full stride, right? That's a complete there. stride there. Yeah. So that's roughly 12 to 15 feet? 12 to 15. So if you're measuring this cat versus some of the faster cats that we've seen running here, I think it's pretty fair to say 15 feet, and give or take a foot mm -hmm. on average. Yeah. It looks good, though. It's just pretty impressive, it's a big very... animal like that moving so gracefully. Yeah, you can see gracefully, every you know? bit of what it takes for her to push off and get or that much cat propelled forward. Yeah. It's pretty yeah. impressive. But at four and a half meters, this tiger's average stride is three meters shorter than the cheetah's. It doesn't have as much reach because its spine just isn't as flexible. So for a tiger, in order to have great upper body strength, you need to have a very strong, rigid backbone. If you don't have that strong, rigid backbone, you can't support the shoulder weight that you would need to tackle a gaur or something along those lines. With that much muscle weight to support, the tiger simply cannot have a flexible spine like a cheetah. Head to head, a tiger would be left in the dust. So if Supercat's going to be super fast, it needs the flexible backbone of the cheetah. But the cheetah's greatest asset is also its curse. A cheetah running at high speed needs legs that are as stable as possible. So the bones at the base of the leg, the fibula and tibia, are bound together by connective tissue. So they can't rotate their ankles as other cats do. Unfortunately, this means cheetahs cannot climb as well as other cats do. And there's nothing super about a cat that can't climb. Because the forearm and lower leg bones are, are bound together with connective tissue in cheetahs, these animals cannot rotate their paws back and forth. And as such, they can't get a good grip on trees. Super cat might have the cheetah's backbone, but it will have to get its climbing skills from somewhere else. If you want to look at a good climber, you take an animal like a leopard. Leopards have exceptionally strong shoulder muscles and forelimbs. They use this strength to carry prey that can be twice their size up a tree out of reach of other predators. Unfortunately, they don't always take it quite high enough. Lions are surprisingly good climbers and often steal a kill from a leopard.
Another great climber in the cat world has got to be the cougar. Cougars have an amazing ability to climb and almost live up in trees. Cougars might be good at climbing up, but they haven't quite mastered the descent. It's actually the smaller cats who reign supreme in the trees. Most cats can climb pretty well, but Super Cat needs to be exceptional. He'll get his climbing skills from one of the smaller cats. The elite climbers among cats are the Margay and the Clouded Leopard. The little known Margay lives in the lowland forests of Central and South America. In this incredibly rare footage, the Margay displays its extraordinary climbing ability thanks to the suppleness of its ankles. The attribute that makes the Margay a super climber is the fact that it can rotate its paws 180 degrees. This allows them to get a really good grip on branches. If we're gonna design a super cat with super climbing ability, we're gonna have to give it the ankles of a Margay. So super cat can now run and climb, but can he jump? This vertical leap would put any NBA player to shame. The good jumpers among animals are animals that have long leg segments, uh, prodigious muscles to extend those legs, and they tend to have short bodies so that when they launch themselves into the air, they basically get all those legs up under the center of mass so it can launch their body uh, upward. Every time I see one of these big cats really turn on the juice and make one of these great leaps, it's just amazing that they have that ability. This feat looks impressive, but most of the height gained is actually just the tiger stretching its body out. Its hind paws are only one and a half meters off the ground, which isn't that much relative to the tiger's size. And it's very impressive watching a, a large tiger jump, but it really doesn't leave the ground very far. It's, it's the smaller cats that are the real jumpers. Cougars weigh about a third as much as the tiger. Their body is a meter or so long, minus the tail. And yet they can jump four and a half meters straight up in the air. But even this agile cat isn't the winner. The ultimate jumper is the caracal, which lives in the grasslands of Africa. This cat is a phenomenal leaper it uses its ability to creep up on a flock of birds, and when the birds try to fly away, the caracal launches itself and grabs them right out of the air. Here is our little caracal lynx. Hey. She's about six months old and about half grown right now. Oh wow, she's beautiful. Now these are great jumpers, right? They are incredible jumpers, able to pull prey right out of the air. Wow. Now I can see why this cat is such a great jumper. It's got long leg segments, it's got huge quadriceps and calf muscles, stout body, and small size. I mean, these are, these are attributes we've got to put in the super cat if we're gonna make it a good jumper. Long legs and powerful muscles will launch super cat high above the ground. Supercat's got the ability to run like the wind, jump through the air, and climb incredibly well. But what else he's got to do? One more thing is that he's got to be able to swim, and swim well. Most cats hate getting wet, but there's an exception to every rule. In reality, there are several species of cats who've learned to love water and become great swimmers. Jaguars have been known to swim across the Panama Canal and rarely venture very far from water. And then there's the tiger. Tiger loves the water, it loves to get wet, and they can use it for their own relaxation and just to cool off. Tigers in the Sundarbans in India are prolific swimmers and will even drive their prey into the water to kill it. 
see it from like this in any of Antle's pool offers an unusual perspective on swimming tigers. <laughs> this is something you don't see every day, huh? No, no, this, this is great. <laughs> this is incredible. I can't believe how good a swimmer this animal is. So it looks like its, it's front paws are, are being spread and acting sort of as paddles. And exactly the, although it's the dog paddling, the back legs don't seem like they're generating much thrust. Right, no, the back legs certainly seem like they're just looking for more oh, surface again. area. Yeah. And those front legs are just working, pulling all that weight through. Look at that, look at the webbing there. It's just like human flippers. You yep. Know? Yep. <laughs> so no wonder it can swim so well. Yeah, that. yeah. That's perfect. This is amazing. But the cat with the supreme adaptation for water is the aptly named fishing cat. These greatly endangered cats live in the wetlands of Southeast Asia. The webbing between their toes is far more pronounced than the tigers. Not only does this make them great swimmers, they can use the webbing like a little scoop to pick up fish. If I had to choose between a foot pad style for super cat of being hard and cornified like a cheetah's paws for running or a webbed paws for swimming, I'd have to go with the webbed paws for swimming. Super cat can run, jump, climb, and swim. Our team's given super cat all the tools it needs to be a versatile athlete. Now, they must ensure this ultimate cat is a finely tuned hunter. Cats aren't just carnivores. They're hyper-carnivores. There's predominantly only one thing on the menu. Meat. Super Cat has the athletic ability to catch his prey. Now, he has to kill it. All cats have these very long, strong canines that they use for killing. And they do this by grabbing the animal's throat and suffocating it or uh, breaking the vertebra and severing the spinal cord, or by cutting into the internal carotid arteries which serve the brain. As long as they get a hold of one of those three, they're probably gonna make a kill. Once a cat has made a kill, it's gonna tear away at the flesh using its incisors, but the real way that it gets pieces of meat to eat is, is using the carnassials. Carnassials are the giant premolars used for vertically shearing meat. They'll turn their head sideways to try to get some meat up in between the, the two slicing blades, and they'll shear chunks of meat off that way. That's why you see them feeding kind of side to side. But as hyper carnivores, cats can't chew or grind their food. Here we have skulls spanning a broad range of cat sizes. Here we have a lion, a tiger, here's a leopard, going all the way down to the bobcat. They all basically have the same dentition. If we look inside the skull here, we see that the molars are greatly reduced. In fact, this back set are, are vestigial. These are the kind of teeth that herbivores would use for grinding up plants and whatnot. Well, these animals don't have that. When you articulate the lower jaw here, we see that those bladed teeth come right together, and it's purely for slicing, and they can't really swing their teeth side to side very much whatsoever. This animal is really not designed for chewing. But he is designed for killing and Super Cat will definitely want some canines. The question is, whose? Super Cat needs the ultimate arsenal of a hunter. For teeth, the most obvious place to turn is to the saber tooth. Smilodon terrorized the mammals of North America a million years ago. Although the saber tooth has very impressive canines, some of the most impressive canines of any meat-eating animal that ever lived, they actually were quite delicate. If we look at them from the side, they had this very slender cross-section. So these implements were very strong front to back, but if you pushed on them from the side, they would break. So actually they were really quite brittle. They're much weaker than the teeth that we see in lions and tigers today, or any of these other cats for that matter. Smilodon became extinct 10,000 years ago. Today's cats have a very different tooth design. The cats we see today have K9 
canines with rounded cross sections. These animals bite into the necks of their prey, and if they hit bone, it's gonna put a lot of stress on these implements, but they can take the stress from any direction because of that rounded cross section. And this is definitely the kind of design that we're gonna to wanna to put in our Super Cat. The tiger really becomes king of the canine because his canine is incredibly long and it's also modified. Your lion's jaguars have a long peg of a sharpened tooth, but the tiger's got that tooth that's incredibly sharp. But Super Cat isn't going to get its canines from any of these guys. There's another cat, far smaller and more secretive, with the most impressive teeth of all the clouded leopard. Scientists studying this elusive jungle cat in Thailand discovered its canines were just as long as a tiger's, even though the tiger is 10 times its size. They've got the largest canine teeth of any other cat in the world, and they're very, very good primate hunters. The conventional way for cats to hunt and kill is for, with a throat bite. These cats, we think largely because of the size of their canine teeth, can go for skull bites if they need to and just pierce the skull of animals. So Super Cat will get its main weapon, its canines, from the clouded leopard. But if Super Cat's going to catch supersized prey, he'll need powerful jaws as well as long teeth. And for that, we need the queen of the beasts. When you look at the power in a set of jaws, you look at what the lion can do with its teeth. It'll grab onto its prey and it won't turn loose. That puncturing power is there, but then the ability to lock on. They'll stay there and they've got incredible tenacity to go with it that just holds that mouth in place. The secret to the lion's great bite force is very obvious. This is the adductor tunnel. This is where the major jaw closing muscles go through and they grab on this process right here and they pull the jaw shut. It's possible to estimate the bite force of an animal such as a lion just from looking at the skull. This little bobcat generates about 25 pounds of bite force at the tip of its canines. The American bobcat's favorite food is rabbit. Now, when we move to the biggest, strongest cat in the Americas, the jaguar, we see an animal that can generate about 250 pounds of bite force at the tip of its canines. A jaguar uses those amazing jaws to pierce right through the skull of a caiman. Now, when we move up to today's big cats, the lions and the tigers, uh, we see bite forces of about 400 pounds at the tip of the canines. That's the equivalent pressure of two large men standing on the tip of a pencil. But there's a compromise that comes with powerful jaws, smaller brains. Now there's something that's really interesting here if you look at these skulls. The, the brain case is enormous on this little bobcat. And as these animals get bigger and bigger, we see that the brain case is really lagging behind. It's, it's almost like these animals have sacrificed their, their brain power for brute strength. The slight exception to this rule is the tiger. It has the same bite force as a lion, but on average, its brain is 16% bigger. It's surprising to most people to find that the tiger's brain is actually bigger than the lion's because we often think of social animals as being so much more evolved and in some cases smarter than animals who live a solitary lifestyle. Based on my experience working with both lions and tigers, I see that tigers have a greater intelligence than the lions do. They'll work out problems. They've got more focus. Supercat needs brains as well as brawn if he's to be the top predator. He'll get the powerful jaws and slightly higher brain power of the tiger. The tiger, like most cats, hunts predominantly after dark. Super Cat 2 must own the night. It's a great advantage to be able to hunt at nighttime because it's a lot easier to catch an animal if it doesn't see you coming. Cats have evolved exceptional night vision. Like most predators, they have forward-facing binocular vision. 
the fields of view from the two eyes overlap so they can perceive depth and distance, critical when pouncing on prey. Scientists estimate nocturnal cats' night vision is six times better than humans. That makes the night a very scary time to be up and about. This is Sham, he's a Eurasian lynx. Lynx are reported to have the best eyesight at night for all of the cats. When you shine a light in a cat's eyes, you get this phenomenal reflective quality. The name lynx comes from the Greek word meaning to shine. Light entering a cat's eye passes through the light-sensitive cells on the retina, then hits a reflective layer called the tapetum lucidum. The light then bounces back through the retina, activating the light-sensitive cells for a second time. Lynx have incredibly wide pupils. That pupil can open up so wide that it almost covers the entire surface of the eye, allowing them to have even more light passing in to hit that reflective surface. To adjust to a large pupil, the lynx requires a larger lens, which in turn requires a strongly curved lens and cornea to prevent peripheral distortion. This creates an unusually large anterior chamber at the front of the eye. An animal like this with this incredible set of eyes definitely is one of our super cats. During the day, the pupils close to tiny pinpricks to prevent bright light from damaging the sensitive eyes. Their eyes lack any red cones, so their world is a somewhat drab scene of blue and green. But it doesn't seem to matter. One particularly vigilant captive lynx could still see a mouse from 75 meters away. With the X-ray eyes of a lynx, Supercat will be well equipped for any hunting excursion, day or night. But there's more to hunting than meets the eye. Supercat must hear his prey coming. Cats have up to 32 muscles controlling each ear, whereas humans only have six. All cats have extraordinary hearing ability. They can, they can hear up into the range of 100 kilohertz. Uh, humans are around 20 kilohertz. So what this means is they can pick up uh, little squeaks and things, noises made by rodents that, that we just, that they're imperceptible to us. Hands down, when you think about hearing for Supercat, you have to consider the serval. A serval is a small African cat weighing about 11 kilos with giant radar dishes for ears. These cones just stick up out of this cat's head. Their ears can rotate independently of each other. And they're able to locate prey and pounce on it before the prey even knows it's coming. So without a doubt, I'm gonna give Supercat a serval's ears. The super cat could have the ears of the serval, but you know, they're much more interesting if they've got that tuft of the caracal. Scientists have yet to explain the black tufts on caracal's ears. Whatever their purpose, they certainly add a little flair. Equipped with giant ears, sensitive enough to hear a rabbit munching 50 meters away, super cat is almost ready for the hunt. Cats are masters of the hunt. Few animals can move through the forest with such stealth, or crawl through the grass within inches of their prey. The element of surprise is key, and cats are masters at blending into the background. So if you think about the cats who have no stripe patterns or no spot patterns, they, they just have a, a plain coat, like a lion or a caracal, those animals tend to live in areas where there aren't many trees to hide in the shadows of. The cats with more elaborate patterns tend to live in jungles or forested areas. The cheetah is the inexplicable exception to this rule. As a daytime hunter out in the open, 
its vibrant spots have scientists baffled. Supercat will need a splendid coat for camouflage. The question is, spots or stripes? The tiger is alone in his striped coat. Most other cats adorn themselves with spots. Sadly, humans tend to covet what they admire, and cats have become a victim of their own beauty. But there's another option that might be a better alternative, especially for hunting at night. Black, like a panther. There's actually no such thing as a black panther. What people often call black panthers are most oftentimes a melanistic form of either a leopard, a jaguar, or a cougar. This is Bajan, black leopard male. Now, he's a melanistic leopard. He's so full of color, he appears black. But if you look closely, he's got some spotted patterning mixed all in here. He is still a spotted leopard. Melanism is caused by a double recessive gene, so it's coded for, just like human hair color. So far, scientists have found melanism in at least 15 species of cat. And what this tells us is that melanism is somehow potentially beneficial to those species. Whether it's for hunting, for mating, we don't know. But we know that if a gene evolves and sticks around in a species, then it has some sort of evolutionary benefit to that species. There's research suggesting the genes coding for black fur do have an added benefit. They make the cats more resistant to viral infection. This might explain why there are more black leopards in areas where there's been a recent epidemic, such as Java and Malaysia. I think that's a very good reason to make Supercat black. Let's make it a creature of the night. Supercat gets his coat. But what about a mane? Come on, it's Supercat. It's got to have a mane. But what is the mane for? And why would Supercat want one? He's got to have this. It gives him body armor. It makes him even more protected and more powerful. Lions are the only cats whose males have manes. Many scientists have speculated why. One theory on the function of the mane is to protect that male lion from incurring life-threatening injuries. Male lions lead a very violent life. And if you've got chain mail around your neck to protect you from that killing aggression, then you've got a great adaptation. Another theory for having a mane is it's used in sexual selection. This theory is an interesting one, which suggests that female lions actually prefer a larger, darker mane in males as a sexual attractant. The same research shows long, dark-haired males have more testosterone and other males are more intimidated by them, so they're more capable of defending and maintaining a pride. So perhaps blondes don't have all the fun. But having a long, dark mane is a burden. It raises your body temperature, which isn't good. So the mane is sending a signal, just like an elk's antlers or a peacock's tail. Long, dark hair signals strength and virility, but it's a burden only superior lions can bear. I think Supercat has to have a mane, and while we're at it, we might as well make that mane as long and as dark as possible. With the magnificent mane of a lion, Supercat can attract more females and scare off any rivals. Now all he needs is a voice. A lion's roar can be heard for miles across open savanna. It's a way for pride members to communicate and lay claim to their territory. Lions live in prides to defend the best territories. Those in prime habitat catch more prey and raise more babies. Supercat should also live in a pride, but he'll need a voice to communicate and to scare off any rivals. Conventional wisdom is that small cats purr while big cats roar. But these sounds are hard to classify. 
That sounds like a very angry cat. Cougar? Am I a little lost? It sounds like a bleeding goat. Sounds like it's strangling something. Yeah. Possibly itself. I don't know what it is, but I wouldn't want to run into it in the wild. <laughs> it would scare the hell out of me. Bow. Tiger. <laughs> it's just the same cat. I had no idea that cats could make so many different noises. All cats can spit, hiss, growl, and snarl when they're in a hostile situation. But it's the roar that sets the lion and tiger apart. Lions and tigers have an amazing ability to vocalize and make these big, booming, roaring sounds that can be heard for miles in their natural habitats. Both lions and tigers' roars can reach 114 decibels, almost as loud as a jet engine flying 30 meters overhead. These animals can make incredible roars. I mean, you must have experienced that, right? Well, it's so loud, and it's of the exact right pitch that it seems to penetrate you. When that big barking roar comes out, it just seems to go in you, through your chest, and out your toes. You know what's interesting is science is just finally starting to unlock the secrets to that incredible roar. Now, if you looked inside the larynx of one of these animals, what's been found is that they have square-shaped vocal cords, which is unusual for cats, and they're also very pliable. And so with just a passing of a small amount of air across their vocal cords, it starts uh, generating this, this rumbling sound at a very low frequency. And because it requires so little air, they can sustain it for a long period of time. And it's just deafening, uh, as you're well aware of. Well, we know that Super Cat definitely needs to be able to roar like a tiger. I agree. This intimidating beast may be a creature of our imagination, but it's not entirely a fantasy. There's already a super cat on the planet. And he's a giant. Sometimes in nature, accidents occur. A zebra mates with a horse, you get a zorse. And if a lion mates with a tiger, you get the liger. Lions and tigers are actually separated by about seven million years of evolution, but they still retain enough similar genetic material that they can interbreed. Lions and tigers will never meet in the wild. Their ranges don't overlap. But in captivity, there's no telling who's going to fall in love. This is Zeus the Liger. Zeus is a liger because his father is a lion and his mother is a tiger. He's a liger. He's huge. He is almost 900 pounds and over 11 feet tall. Zeus is nearly twice the size of either of his parents. One theory is his phenomenal size is caused by genomic imprinting. When a gene from only one parent is expressed, in lions, a father's genes program his cubs for maximum growth. But the lioness wants all her offspring to survive, so her genes restrain the success of growth. But when the mother is from a different species, i.e. a tiger, her genes don't work to counteract the growth genes from the father. So the growth genes are fully expressed. This can be the result. This Bengal tiger is about 500 pounds, a fully mature male. He's got a large head, big bone structure, but it's dwarfed when you see this huge liger boy. His head is almost twice the size of this Bengal tiger's. It's so long from tip to nose here that you've just got an enormous structure. The width in these huge jaw muscles and these big bones just make him be an enormous character. You're a good boy. This is the tiger skull. This is a lion skull. And this is the liger skull. These guys can generate 400 pounds of bite force at the tips of their canines. 
I measured the muscle sizes for this animal, the leverage, and figured out that it can generate a thousand pounds of bite force at its canines. In this sense, this animal is a living, breathing super cat. But a top predator like super cat needs speed as well as power. So is bigger always better? The enormous liger has jaws more than twice as powerful as any other cat. But being big has its limitations. If you were to put Zeus out in the wild and say, hey, go find yourself some prey, I think he's too big and too lazy to make it in the wild. If you're too big, you can't run as effectively, you can't run as long, because you have to worry about things like overheating, you have to literally worry about cardiac arrest. A 30 kilogram cheetah can sprint for several hundred meters, but its body temperature quickly rises to 40 degrees and it must rest and cool down. At 130 kilos, lions tend to quit after only 100 meters. For a liger that weighs 900 pounds, I wouldn't think that this animal could run much more than 50 yards without collapsing. So this real life super cat might look intimidating, but he's not an ideal model for our super cat. He's simply too big. I think if you want to build an all around super cat, you, you don't want to build too big an animal, you don't want to build too small an animal. I think the happy medium is an animal about the size of a cougar. The cougar has many talents. It's a proficient hunter. It can jump well, and it's a great climber. So it's a good size for Super Cat. But a cougar's not as fast as a cheetah, or as strong as a tiger. And it's not acrobatic like a margay. Why hasn't a cat that's all these things that can be Super Cat ever evolved? It really comes down to physics. You just can't put a, a giant head of a tiger on, on an animal with a backbone like a cheetah. It's just not gonna work. You can't be fast and strong at the same time. Each feline is able to accomplish a certain set of tasks that help them to survive, but they can't be good at everything. Everything in life that you have is a trade-off. You have to be suited to live within your environment. But Super Cat is good at everything. So what will his environment be? What kind of life will he lead? Thanks to our experts, Super Cat lives in a pride. And a pride needs a lot of food. Prides of lions live out on the savanna, because that's where the large herds of prey are. There aren't prides of tigers or any other cats in the jungle, because the vegetation's too dense for herds of prey to band together. But there's another kind of jungle appearing on the planet. One that's packed with herds of slow moving prey. The urban jungle. Could this be Super Cat's home? Humans are one of the few species on the planet whose numbers are rising. In fact, they're exploding. And as human habitat spreads across the globe, the cats are getting squeezed. On the continent of Africa, there are nine species of cats, and six of them are either endangered, vulnerable, or threatened with the possibility of extinction. It's the same story in Asia and South America. The leopard, the tiger, the jaguar, they're all disappearing. Only the animals that can adapt to human habitats are likely to survive. It's one more adaptation Super Cat needs. In a, in a world where human population is, is just exploding, it's, it's pretty obvious the Super Cat is gonna have to be an animal that can uh, survive in urban settings. Among the larger cats, only one seems to be coping with the changing landscape. The cougar. Increasingly, it's knocking on our door. On Vancouver Island in British Columbia, authorities routinely respond to cougar sightings. 
Almost a third of all cougar attacks in North America have occurred on Vancouver Island. Because these cats live on an island, when the population expands and the cougars look for new territory, there is nowhere else for them to go but to town. In one famous incident, a young male cougar boldly strolled into the parking garage of the Empress Hotel. Cougars have been largely absent east of the Rocky Mountains for a century. But more and more sightings are coming in across the Midwest, especially in the suburbs. In 2011, there was a cougar sighted in the Black Hills of South Dakota. That cougar migrated out of South Dakota. He made it through Minnesota, across Wisconsin. He made it all the way across the United States and was killed by a car, ultimately, 70 miles from New York City. This is an amazing journey for a cat to take. What's bringing the cougars back? One theory on why cougars are doing so well is just look out your backyard. You'll inevitably see white-tailed deer. Cougars are finding plenty of food in the suburbs and have definitely found a way to cope with our encroaching habitat. But if super cats are going to make it in the real urban jungle, then there's only one species to turn to for help, the domestic cat. Clearly this cat has all the skills it needs to flourish in the city. Even without a human caretaker, Felis catus has no problem finding shelter and food. Supercat will get his street smarts from him. He is a feline with supreme athletic abilities. But Supercat lives in a pride, which means he needs a lot of food to sustain his group. And there's only one animal roaming the streets in sufficient numbers to sustain him. Us. If this creature could exist, it'd be an amazing animal. I'd love to see it in action. I'd love the ability to watch it and see what it could do. It, it's a good jumper, it's, it's, it's fast, it's smart, it's, 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 it's really a magnificent animal. I'd love to see it. It'd be the perfect predator, it would be the perfect survivalist. Super Cat is equipped with the superpowers befitting his name. But he's a creature of our imagination, and he's not a cat you'd want to run into in a dark alley. 